We've been spending the last week out here with the Nikon Z6 II and it has performed absolutely phenomenally. The Nikon Z6 II is my new full-time camera and I would like to talk to you about it today. Over the video, we'll be going into real life situations and I'll be showing you a number of different samples from a variety of different settings. First, a few sentences about me to give you a clearer picture of where this review is coming from. I am uh, Taylor Jackson and these are my fingerless gloves. I wear a number of different hats in the photography space. I am a wedding photographer that does 60 plus weddings every single year on a normal year. I'm also a commercial photographer and video creator. I do a lot of landscape work, again, both photography and video within that. What I don't do is I don't do a lot of wildlife, bird photography, sports photography, um, though that might change this year because, I don't know, we had a lot of fun on this trip. This review is based off of those professional categories that I do active work in and not necessarily just from my perspective as somebody that creates videos on YouTube. You're talking about the eagle that just flew over our yeah. heads. <laughs> we all missed. <laughs> Beautiful eagle right over our heads, right down this, uh, the, the lake there. And uh, we all missed it, every single one of us. Three of us out here, not one of us got it. We woke up today to the most perfect day and quite honestly, the lake is probably going to be frozen tomorrow. So we kind of got in here the last possible day, the most amount of snow. Would be nice to see some additional mountains out here, but really I, I can't complain about anything because this is perfect. This is, a, this is a Christmas card in the making. With me, I have my very weather sealed Nikon Z6 II that is completely covered in snow. And I'm gonna be doing a longer exposure here to really just kind of capture uh, the, the Christmas scene. I have the 14 to 24 super wide angle lens. And one thing that I like to do rather than hitting the, the button up here or using a remote is I just simply touch the screen. And I feel like that's low impact enough that it really doesn't, it won't shake the camera. And uh, my one second exposure looks pretty good, I think. And that's about it, because it's the perfect scene. So all you can do is just show up most of the most of the work's getting here. Once you're here, it's really easy. When you have the right gear. <laughs> First, I would like to talk to you about the files. One of the reasons I've stuck around with Nikon since 2005 is because of the files that come off of the cameras. In the Nikon Z6 II, it is a combination of the great Nikkor glass, the sensor, the dual processors. This is a 24 megapixel 14 bit raw file that comes off this camera. So it has a depth and realness that I absolutely love. Beyond the technical specs, there is a sense of art to these files as well. The way the lenses handle the focus, the way it rolls in and rolls out, feels really, really nice. The color palette of this camera is also exactly what I want. To put my wedding photographer hat on and photojournalist hat, I guess, for a moment here, I'm not always in control of lighting. And one thing that I love Nikon for is that the files handle bad lighting very, very well. The files just seem easier to work with and to get right when you're in a non-ideal environment. Their shade white balance colors are my personal Personal favorite and when skin tones are in the shade facing away from the Sun and they get hit with that shade profile it just absolutely feels perfect another critical thing for me was having two card slots as a wedding photographer I need it and another great benefit of the fact that it is either a CF Express or XQD in one of the slots is that when you get back from a big shoot, your cards download so much faster. After a wedding day of maybe 4,000, 5,000 images, I'd rather download all of my cards in a few minutes and start getting them backed up off site right away rather than waiting an hour plus that it would sometimes take an SD card. Here is a quick showcase of something that you should never have to do, but I just want to show you how well the file handles it. Here's a photo shot in heavy snow now in Lightroom, dragging the dehaze slider all the way to 100. This is the image now. I've worked with a lot of files from a lot of different companies, and when you go this hard on a file, usually you start to get some crazy blue vignettes, or just it becomes generally unusable. But that is not the case for the Nikon Z6 files. Now let me tell you about my favorite lens, 24-70 f2.8 for the Z series. And this combination, specifically 24-70, to 70, uh, the 2.8S lens, is this is probably my favorite combination for travel and landscape photography that we can do probably, I would say over 90% of the content that we do with just this lens alone. It's nice to have others, but this one is the, is the workhorse out here in the mountains.
To speak to the video files, these are all straight out of camera video files, all handheld using the in-body stabilization. I put Active D lighting on, uh, on high actually in most situations, and it creates a look that I really love. As someone that creates a lot of volume of work, there is tremendous value in this camera helping me get my final video files rather than having to go to DaVinci or Premiere to color my clips after and spending extra and unnecessary time. That said, you will be able to record 12-bit 4K raw video footage to an external recorder. So if you need full, absolute flexibility on your footage, it'll give you that. Now let's uh, head to a really loud waterfall where I have to yell at you. One of the benefits of the Nikon Z6 II being a mirrorless camera, you can actually see the true exposure preview, which means that I can see how much light and when I'm adjusting my settings manually. Uh, rather than in the past with the digital SLR, you kind of had to just eyeball it or just make a bunch of test frames. Here you can show up and if you just show up at the exact right time, you're able to just get the settings right and just start taking photos. There is an ease of use to this camera, both in the physical ergonomics as well as in the menus. The button layout makes sense and you have fast access to anything you need and it's honestly just really nice to use this camera all day. Announced with the Z6 II is the battery grip, so if you prefer a battery grip to improve the ergonomics for your hand size, that's an option now. For me, personally when I'm traveling, I don't use a grip. I prefer the small size of the camera when out in the real world like this. To briefly mention the Nikkor lens lineup, there's a review for pretty much all of them on my YouTube channel if you're interested, but a number of them have been designed to have a small physical size, which means that they're great for travel. The 1.8 primes are also the perfect balance of quality to size. I am happy to use any of those 1.8 primes in a professional session, and they're small enough to fit in the bag to carry with you all day as well. Really putting the weather sealing of the Nikon Z6 II to the test here, uh, where there is literal, there's, there's pieces of ice forming on our lenses and our camera bodies, but it is worth it in the name of photography and video out here, because this is the most perfect winter scenario I've ever been in. Emerald Lake Lodge over here looking absolutely amazing. Jacob out here in his canoe that he brought all the way from Calgary. Thank you, thank you, Jacob. And uh, just a phenomenal, phenomenal day. The weather sealing on this camera releases a lot of anxiety when you're out on a paid shoot and the weather starts to come in a little bit. At a wedding, I can't really just stop taking photos. If my couple is out there though, I'm out there, I can't afford to just go and hide because I'm nervous about my gear or not get those images of that once in a lifetime moment. To have proper weather sealing in your camera I think is very, very important and out here in the snow today, we are not worried at all about our camera. You'll also notice that a lot of the images are just shot handheld and I'm shooting some really, really slow shutter speeds at like one slash fourth of a second. And this lens on this camera body, they just balance in a way that it's very easy to handhold that slow. Uh, make sure your subject's not moving in the frame, but if you want the water to kind of blur out just a little bit, um, you can get away with some really, really slow shutter speeds. The in-body stabilization is really great. As I mentioned before, pretty much all of the video that you've been seeing has just been shot handheld, and it does a really great job. For video, the S lenses are also pretty much silent, so they won't step on your audio, which is great. Uh, for photography and my testing, I can get down to one slash three of a second, so one third of a second handheld, which is great if you wanted, if you're just out there on a hike and you want to shoot that waterfall and you didn't bring your tripod or or if you just want to use that lower shutter speed to show some motion within your frame, it just makes it an even more versatile camera than it already was. One of the keys to shooting in blue hour is to have a lens with a wide aperture, so something like this 70 to 200 2.8, and also a camera body that can just handle high ISO really well. This Nikon Z6 II is phenomenal, and you'll really never run into technical limitations when you're using this, this combination out in the field. Well, that looks really good. The Nikon Z6 II does a great job at high ISOs. That said, I find that if I have the correct lens for the job, I'm rarely over 6400 ISO in a real life environment. Basically, if I have to go above that at f1.8, the people that are in the scene can't even see each other or they can't see me, so that situation probably wouldn't ever really actually exist. And from that same wedding photographer hat, the focus in low light has been greatly improved in the Z6 II over the original Z6. So you're able to focus in a lot less light and get more accurate and fast focus. Only regret today is that I actually broke 
my polarizing filter so my, my camera fell over or I fell over with my camera strapped onto me here and it actually broke the polarizing filter off the front but the 24 to 70 2.8 totally fine Z6 II totally fine and it was a it was a pretty good fall that actually that physically broke a filter so maybe a testament to the build quality of both the lenses and the camera bodies. The last thing I'll touch on here is autofocus, another great improvement over the original Z6. The entire autofocus system just works faster and more accurately. You also have some new autofocus modes, this wide area AF where you can set face and eye detect to only work within the box. Uh, as an event and wedding photographer, this is a great feature to have. I can basically isolate my subjects that I need to track and have the camera ignore all other eyes and faces in the scene. Subject tracking is also really great to have for tracking specific objects in a scene. It moves fast and accurately as well. And I personally have it set to my front F1 button, my function button on the front of my camera, so I can easily activate it with one quick little tap. Thanks so much for joining us here in the mountains and uh, I'll see you again next time. You can subscribe if you want. You can like this video if you want. I'm not your, your parents. I, I don't have to tell you what to do. If you like this video, like it one time. If you don't like this video, hit the dislike button two times and then the like button and then the subscribe button and then copy this link and send it to your friends. If you want to see more from this trip and the Nikon Z6 II, there's a link in the description below. Or if you're on YouTube, it's probably floating in front of your face right now. You can just click it right there. Yeah. Yeah, do it.